previously on Science for All. How did Newton figure it out? Now the answer. It was last July the 4th. My first 4th of July on the American soil in Boston. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool indeed. USA! 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 And I think that even though he was English, Isaac Newton would have particularly appreciated the display as it depicts perfectly the missing link between the down-to-earth world of the apple and the divine realm of the planets. To see what I mean, let's flash back to the early 1600s, only a few decades before Newton was born, when three giants of science and mathematics would lay out the three clues that would be guiding Newton his quest to understand the earth and the heavens. First, in the Netherlands, René Descartes made one of the most amazing discoveries in the history of mathematics. Namely, he connected two apparently disconnected areas of mathematics, the geometry invented in ancient Greece and the algebra developed in Baghdad. Thanks to this connection, geometrical objects could now be translated into numbers and equations. By using the simplicity of algebra to analyze the geometrical trajectories of the apples and the planets through space, Newton was led to invent the fundamental concept of the derivative. This is often regarded as the birth of advanced mathematics as it almost literally unleashed the power of the infinite. In particular, thanks to this new mathematical concept, Newton finally provided a precise definition to the otherwise fuzzy notions of speed and acceleration. Second, in Italy, and as we've already discussed in the previous video, Galileo Galilei found out that not only do all objects fall at the same rate in vacuum, but they also, when moving horizontally as well, have the same trajectory. A very specific kind of trajectory, the trajectory of a parabola. And amazingly, using his newfound mathematics, Newton found out that the motion of the parabola was precisely that of a constant downward acceleration. This was just brilliant! Galileo and Newton had unified the motion of all falling objects by noting that, no matter what their weights, shapes, positions and motions were, no matter whether they were going upwards or downwards, all objects in free fall accelerate downwards and they do so at a constant rate. Newton went even a step further as he generalized this crucial insight. He reckoned that forces only affect directly the accelerations of objects, not the position, not the velocity. You know, F is equal to MA. Third and finally, in Prague, Johannes Kepler was carefully determining the exact trajectory of the planet of the solar system in a sun-centered model of the universe. After years of painstaking calculations, he slowly convinced himself that the trajectories of the planets weren't circles, especially Mars. Instead, he found out that planets follow ellipses. Yes, ellipses. But why? That was the question that the astronomer Edwin Halley once asked an old Newton. Newton supposedly calmly answered, Well, this follows from the gravitational force being inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Wait, how do you know that? Halley asked. Well, I've done the calculations a few decades ago. Yes, that's right. Based on the motion of the planets, Newton had already figured out what the precise law of gravity should be. But he never took the time to tell anybody else. Haley couldn't believe what he was hearing. He begged Newton to write down his decade-year-old ideas about mechanics and promised to pay for its publication. Newton agreed and worked hard, very hard, for the following 18 months. He laid out his theory of mechanics carefully by starting with four first principles. The three first principles are the infamous laws of motion, while the fourth is the law of gravity. Crucially, Newton went on showing that this law of gravity was no more divine in the sky than right here on Earth. The laws up there were in fact the same as the law 
down here. In particular, and against all intuitions, the moon is falling on the earth just like the apple does. To illustrate that, to portray this unification of the earth and the heaven as a single universe ruled by the same law of gravity, Newton devised the so-called cannonball thought experiment. But I'm going to illustrate this with fireworks. If the firework explodes weakly, then the fires fall down as parabolas. That's one of the things that got me really excited about these fireworks. Now explode it a bit more, and the fireworks could in theory travel miles away. Explode it still more strongly, and it could travel thousands of miles away. But then, since the Earth is actually round, this means that the trajectory can no longer be a parabola. Explode it still more strongly, and suddenly, you see that the firework could travel around the Earth, and it would do so according to an ellipse, just like a planet. This thought experiment was a brilliant illustration that a single but universal law of gravity suffices to describe both the falling of the apple and the orbit of the planets. It was absolutely glorious. It was the rise, at last, of mathematical physics. This amazing project that all along the following centuries would be picked up and further developed by so many other geniuses and that would reveal to us new insights into the working of nature and into the fundamental rules of our universe that would turn out to be stranger than Newton could have ever imagined. Newton himself once said, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself in now and then, finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. And he also added, If I have seen further than others, it is by standing upon the shoulders of giants. No doubt that among others, he was referring to Descartes, Galileo and Kepler. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Next time we're going to finally be talking about Albert Einstein and the theory of general relativity. To do so, we're going to focus on the idea of free fall. In particular, while Galileo somehow proved that all objects must be falling at the same rate, he didn't really give a good explanation for that. And if you follow Newton's reasoning, the explanation for that is still not that good. So the question I want you to think about is are astronauts up there in the satellites weightless? Do they feel gravity? And if you really, really, really ponder this question, you should get to the same thoughts as Einstein did a hundred years ago. Namely, you should get to Einstein's happiest thoughts. So, are astronauts weightless? This is what I want you to think about for next time. Please, 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 please share this video if you've enjoyed it. Please, please show it to your friends. So, I've put two links here. The first one is a link to my Science for article on college sections like parabola and ellipses uh, that are at the core of Newton's discovery of his laws of motion and of gravity. And I've also put a link towards my Sanford article on Newton's uh, three laws of motion and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.